All right. Rahu Bat Musyaru. This is Tabi Jet, also known as Tab Tachatat Hatshepsut Atumre Ainun. And um, I would like to greet you all, family, Sabians worldwide. Um, I come to you today with Ashuk Wujamud Saheh Nakhush, and that means divine love and sound right reasoning. And my purpose of having this call is so that as we all move on our journey, you can all get a clear understanding of what is actually going on. And I'm going to tell you some things that you're not going to like to hear because, you know, people are all about loving unity, loving unity, but love is an action word. If your mom cares about you and you're doing something wrong, she's going to put her foot down. So there are members in our tribe that are devils, okay? And I have had personal experiences with these devils, and it is only right for me as your sister, as a Donald Tat, to explain to you what is going on. I am fed up, and you all should be fed up too. It has been much too long. Um, the master teacher, Baba Yanenen, has been incarcerated for almost 20 years. That is much too long for a person to be in prison for something that they did not do. Now I understand that, you know, who I know who Baba is. You know, we were both locked up in the same facilities at the same time, and he did write a letter and send that out to the family to explain that there were crafts that were going to take us both up out of here. But what they did was they put Baba in a cell full of lead, and they saw me, but they did not see Baba. But that's not what this call is about. I'm just saying that to you all to let you know that a lot of you don't know what it feels like to be incarcerated. You don't know what it feels like to be in jail. You don't know what it feels like to be mistreated by prison guards and people that go home every day, you know. So, you know, you, you learn to appreciate the little things when you go to jail, you know, like getting up and going to get a cup of tea, you know, being able to just wake up and go to the bathroom and not have to wait in a line or have someone else in there that them blew the spot up or to see, you know, you just meet all types of weirdos. Sometimes you meet great people, but trust me, a lot of those people that are in there, they belong in there. But with my experience from being incarcerated and being in the same facility with the master teacher and my experience from when I got out and Baba has requested for me to go to Athens, Georgia, like I'm telling you, everything that I'm doing, everything that I have done, not what I'm doing, but everything that I have done for the master teacher, I, I was only doing what it was asked of me because he was incarcerated and he made it clear. And, of course, a lot of family members are going to try to hide the fact that Baba said that I wrote him more than anybody. You know, sometimes if he didn't write me, I still wrote. I would send four letters at a time to make him laugh, you know. But um, this 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 conversation and this 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 conference call is to reveal to you all who the black devils are. Okay, I and, and I want to say this before I begin. There are many of you who, if you rewind the clock fifteen years ago, I need you to do this before I begin in your mind. I need you to rewind the clock, rewind your timeline at least 15 to 16 years, and be honest with yourself and tell me exactly what were you doing 15, 16 years ago, okay? Because I lived in Athens, Georgia, around these niggas, okay? I lived in Athens, Georgia, around these devils. I watched them go up to the visit, come back, give us information, go up to the visit, come back, give us information. They're all dressed up, collecting money, and it's always the same thing recycling like it is now. And it's still the same thing going on. They're just different players in the game. <laughs> and I'm about to blow their spot up, and I don't care if they don't like what i got to say. You can say it's negative, say whatever, but this is real. This is somebody's life, and this is the truth, okay? So as I said, I'm coming to you with our shook, and, and I need to give you all a fahum an understanding of where and why we are where we are today in Baba Yanun's freedom, why what's going on with his privileges, 
his phone calls, his rights to due process as a man, his rights as our God and our Lord and Savior, who has been incarcerated for over 20 years now today. And, you know, throughout Bible's incarceration, they have put so many frivolous restrictions and limitations so that he can't contact the outside world. And and I always, like I said to Congress a few weeks ago, because I got in contact with Congress and had them, they sent a letter to the BOP. They told me to write, the uh, to appeal the letter that they wrote to me, because I wrote Bob and they sent the letter back. And the associate warden, he sent a letter explaining to me, telling me that I needed to, that I can appeal it. So I said, okay, let me appeal this. And I did. And so... We're going we're gonna to talk about that later on, but before I talk about that, family, it is imperative that you understand what is really going on. And I want to say this, I have no reason to make up anything that I'm about to tell you, okay? And a lot of y'all on this phone, y'all know what I'm saying is true, but you're afraid to speak up because you're afraid of what Baba may say because these people have power, you know, or so they think. You know, they uh, go up to the visit, they get letters, and my thing is this. If you get letters from Baba, and if you have the power in your hands to write your father, your brother, your uncle, or whatever, you know, your master teacher, why are you not making any changes? Why do you push the family out so that you can feel like, oh, I got the power now? You know, but anyway, let, let's get to it, family. Let's get to it because I'm not going to rant on no more. Now, one thing I want to say is this, okay, and I'm telling you as an inmate and as a licensed paralegal, okay, now this is what I want to know, and this is what you guys should be asking them too, okay, because now they've been doing all, having all of these frivolous, you know, uh, restrictions, and making Baba have a limitation to the outside world for years, right? So then your question should be, where the hell is Mario and Victoria? Because they were the last ones. I mean, these niggas, and I'm calling them niggas because that's what they are. They are not my family. And I'm about to break that down to y'all too. Why didn't Victoria and Mario, with that, remember when they, I don't know if you guys remember when they were showing off on YouTube and they were, you know, playing Baba's editing tapes so you can't hear the whole content of the conversation that they had with Baba. They would cut it, you know, like they like these devils doing commercials, you know. Oh, go get this, go do this, and when you go get it, it's nothing like it. They would do that with Baba's recordings. They would edit and have these frivolous, I mean, have this uh, crazy, stupid videos on YouTube with them talking to Baba and her saying, I love you, Victoria. And I sent you those love you stamps. Did you get those I love you stamps? And I remember Baba said in the background, and she said, did you get those forever stamps? And Baba said, uh, and he didn't say anything. And then she said again, she said, uh, Doc, did you get those forever stamps? And Baba said, uh, this ain't going to be going on forever. <laughs> okay? So now, why isn't Victoria and Mario, what did they do? They were the last attorneys that, were, that I, was with Victoria, Mario, and Tucker, Right? They were the last ones going up to the prison. And then, and then they did that stupid, you know, uh, complaint that they filed, and they intentionally left, you know, some of Baba's, uh, you know, when you're incarcerated, you have a, 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 a remedy, an administrative remedy. What that is, it starts from the number 8, and it goes all the way up to the number 12, which would reach the regional office in Washington, D.C. So what Victoria did, so I was told, Okay, and you can go on Lexis Nexus and pull it up and read it yourself. What they did was they intentionally left things out so that way that the judge could not f move forward to having Baba transferred. And by the way, an inmate, and I'm telling you because I'm a former inmate and I was in the feds, okay, I was not in the state, I was in the feds like them, and just because Baba is the master teacher, it doesn't mean that the rules don't apply to him. Every inmate falls under the same rules and regulations, okay? So when an when attorney puts in for a medical transfer, it's not really a medical transfer. It's called a furlough, okay? What they do is they transfer you to a medical facility to get treatment, and after you get the treatment and the doctor sign a paper, they, they transfer you right back to your facility where you were, okay? Because there was a lot of inmates in prison, everybody want to go to Camp Fluffy. That's what they call um, 
Butner, North Carolina, they call it Camp Fluffy because the beds are really fluffy and it's really nice and, you know, you get really good food there. Every facility has a nickname and a, and a, 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 a pro and a con that comes with it. And so what they do is they're not going to just ship an inmate there because they know some inmates don't want to be where they're at, so they'll cut their finger, cut a toe off. Or they'll do anything just to get out of a place like where Baba is. So that right there with that medical transfer, I already knew that was crap. And then I don't know if you guys remember when Mario and Victoria, when they first came on board, they were trying to get documents from me, and I said, I'm not giving you nothing. He was like, what did Baba say? I said, wait a minute, hold up, hold up. First of all, who the hell you think you're talking to? I don't got to give you nothing. You don't run nothing in my life. But Baba said this. I said, if Baba said jump off a roof, I'm going to go jump off a roof. I said, I'm not giving you anything. I said, you're, the, you're, you're claiming you're her paralegal. She's a lawyer. Go get, get your lazy ass up and go get it yourself, okay? Y'all collecting all this money. Go and do it. I'm not giving you my blood, sweat, and tears. And what did he do? He went on Facebook and started slandering me. And did y'all have my back as y'all Nawapian sister with all the things that I've done to help Baba since he's been in there that y'all know of or maybe you don't know, but you're going to find out today y'all didn't do anything to say, yo, bro, you're not going to talk to that sister like that. If she don't want to do it, just move on. No, you know. And this nigga Mario, he didn't even, he didn't even have reverence for Baba on Tamaray. Ask any of the guards. And people that lived on the land, they will tell you that Mario hated the master teacher. So if you hated Baba, why did you pop up all of a sudden out of nowhere with this Victoria chick claiming that she had ways to get Baba transferred? And then, then they had y'all out there in the cold, you know, chanting in the freezing cold at night with another federal agent, Charles Mallory. He's a federal agent, y'all. He's not with us. Okay, he's an agent, and I'm gonna get in. I'm gonna I'm gonna get in that. I'm gonna get into it about him too. So let me let me let me let me slow down, cause I'm getting excited. <laughs> I'm telling y'all, y'all just don't understand what I've seen and what I've been through. It's just hideous, you know. So let me let me slow down and 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 and, and breathe for a minute, cause I, I got I got I have to tell y'all all of this. Like this is mind blowing and it's disgusting. Okay, so now here you have Victoria and Mario. They didn't do anything. And since she came on board, this is the longest Baba has ever not had his privileges, okay? And I'm going to tell you what they did. Victoria, Waki, Fatima, they all did satanic rituals in Prospect Park in Brooklyn. And some of you idiots went following them. And I want to say this to y'all. When have y'all ever known the master teacher to burn fire anywhere? On the land back in Brooklyn, I've never seen Baba ever burn fire, ever. I remember one time we were coming, Baba picked me and two other sisters to come with him. We went to a storage room somewhere, and we were walking, and he was talking, and there was a brother standing out there, and it was cold, and he asked Baba if he could light a fire on the corner, like if they could get like a little garbage can, because they used to do that in New York. You know, in cities, they'll get a garbage can to light fire. And Baba said to them, why would you want to light a fire? You're, you're, you're going against the very forces that, that we're, we're, uh, we're up against. He said no. And he's like, he said, he said, um, he said, I forgot what he said. He said something to him. He said, and then you'll stay warm. And we walked away and started laughing. And then he went upstairs and had one of his sisters in the kitchen make the brother a hot soup, some slip pea soup. And he said, you know, make sure you bring that brother a hot soup. You know, it was really funny. We laughed. But I never forget what Baba said. And I was like, wow, that, that makes sense, you know. Why would we burn a fire? So that should let y'all know that when you're around people who claim that they love Baba and they say, hey, let's do this ritual, what are you doing? Why are y'all following these people? The only ritual Baba ever had that he put out for us to follow was the Festival of Colors. And he wrote that out and told everybody to do this. He never said to walk around a bonfire. Like, you know, and then y'all wondering why things are happening to you. It's because you're around these evil people, okay? So now let's move on. What did Victoria do? Nothing. What did Mario do? Nothing. What did J.Y. do? Nothing. And we got all of these lawyers, and they did nothing. Yet what I tried to do as much as I could to help, and as a family, you know, y'all allow these black devils to just come in and do whatever, and treat your sister like crap, and I'm talking about me. 
and y'all don't step up and say anything to them. I don't care if they have a title. They, that doesn't give them the right to be disrespectful. It doesn't give them the right to do whatever to Baba just because they got a letter, just because, oh, she's the clan mother. Okay? So now let's move on, family. Now, um, these, you know, evil people have, you know, what they do is, they're, it's, they're doing things so that Baba can be restricted and won't have mail. So they figure like, okay, this is what they do. When the mail, when Baba gets the mail and the mail comes in the prison, they investigate the mail and they watch the people who are smart and the people who care and the people who ask the right questions. And those are the ones like myself and some of, and some of you who they don't want Baba writing. You know, they'll let Baba write somebody stupid like Waki and his and her daughter <laughs> Fatima and his son Ishmael because they won't do anything. I mean, look, Baba's been restricted for all these years and they've been writing him. What have they done? What have they done? Nothing. They sit there and write him every day. They don't reach out. And I feel like this: Ishmael has has the power with celebrities and different people that he can reach out to to get involved to help his father. Why is he not doing that? You know, and why is he waving his letters, using it as power to say, you know, whatever. What, they're waiting for their father to be assassinated in a prison, and they think that we're going to be the next ones, that we're going to follow their asses? Because I'm going to tell you like this, if a meteorite fell out the sky today or tomorrow, them niggas wouldn't know what to do. They wouldn't know where to go and where to take us, okay? So let's stop it with the crap, y'all. Just cut the crap, all right? So now... They check out the mail and they see who's smart and who's and who's stupid, and they go through Bob's mail and then they come up with these frivolous reasons to prevent him from writing us. Okay, so but but see, family, we gotta come together to stop this abuse of power from those reptilians in our group in human form. Okay, because they're doing their best to prevent the Sabians world over from coming together. In other words, if you're a smart person like myself and you've done some thorough investigation on Dr. Melikazi, your case, the violations of Judge Charles Ashley Royal in the Middle District Court of Georgia, the violations of, what's that attorney named, Sharon Radley. Look at her name, Sharon Radley. You know what rats are? Rats are demons. Baba said that a long time ago, you know. So the violations of Sheriff Howard Richard Seals, what about him and all the things that he did? What about the violations of the FBI agent, Jaylene Ward? And that other FBI agent, Richard Moultrie. I mean, these, these people held guns to people's children's heads and threatened them and said, if you don't say this on Malachi, you're going to jail. I got the affidavit. I got the affidavit from Issa. I got the affidavit from Jamila Ellis. I got the affidavit from Sakina Woods. I got the affidavit from um, a few of them that said, it's like eight of them, you know, that said that Baba never did this and that they were forcing them to do this. You know, and then, and then in some of the affidavits, they said they held guns to the children's heads. Come on, family. Who in this room that's listening to this conversation can tell me that you will be okay with an FBI agent going to your child's school, okay, pulling them out of class and holding a gun, holding on to their gun to the waist and say, come on, you're not saying this and you not do anything. What is going on, family? I'm about to tell you why, why they're not doing anything, okay? Now, these are Caucasian men and women, FBI agents with guns in their hands, holding their guns, threatening minors, coercing minors to go along with a story about Dr. Melaka Z. York molesting them. And I'm here to tell you, family, that even though it has been many years, we cannot let these devils get away with the disrespect of your children the disrespect of our land, and the disrespect of our Lord and Savior, Baba Yanan. No way, fam. The laws of the universe say that they must pay for everything they do. As it states in the sacred wisdom of Tahuti, I was just reading it the other day about the doctrine on cause and effect. And it says that for every cause there is an effect, and every effect there is a cause, and nothing is ever entirely escapes the laws of the universe. Trust me, whatever you put out, you will get it back. That's why they're going through what they're going through now with that coronavirus, and it's going to get worse, okay? Trust me, everybody who's living in the image of the beast, these niggas is going, they're going to get smacked so hard, they ain't going to know what hit them, okay? So they're not going to get away with it, but it's important that I expose these devils, okay? So trust me when I tell you. These niggas got it coming. 
So if we put in a good in the universe, right, and we write to the prison, all I'm asking you all to do is just write a letter to the prison. We're going to get to that later on, right? But if we put that good out in the universe, the universe, guess what? The universe must respond, and we will get our rights back, and we'll get our Savior back. We'll get him home, okay? Please, family, please. All right, and and I and I also wanted to bring this up. I don't want us to forget about what the Garland Law Firm did, because Baba didn't even hire those attorneys. Did y'all know that? Baba never hired the Garland Law Firm. Law Firm. In fact, that devil worked with the government, and he was hired by your so-called clan mother, and her evil ass son, Kedar Massenburg, in Foster, New York. They were the ones that got that lawyer. And not only that, they stole over a million dollars from the Nuwapians. Did y'all know that? And most of all, family, let's not forget all these FBI informants and the black CIA workers and the government officials who work inside. Those, I'm talking about people who dress like us, look just like us, the shadowers and the shadow person who work for the other side. The, these people work for reptilians, and some of them are reptilians. They're ghouls. And these evil people, and trust me, trust me, family, trust me, I'm here to make sure that you all know everything that I know, okay? And like I said, their job is to make sure that we don't make it. But definitely, I'm going to expose it all because I'm, I'm tired of them. And we need to let the sin, everybody needs to know about this beast man of sin. And before I name them names, which I already did, but I'm going to get, in, get more into it, um, before you um, pass judgment on me, all I want to say is that I don't know, and, you know, if you try to say, you know, that I don't know what I'm talking about, you know, uh, 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 I'm, I'm making it up. Like I said in the beginning, do the math and rewind the clock 15 years and tell me where were you, okay, because I was in Athens, Georgia. I was in Decatur, Georgia, and I remember there were many updates, okay, and events that a lot of you were not a part of. Okay, and it was not recorded. And because you were not there, you can't say, oh, she's making it up because you wasn't there. You know, they didn't record these updates from the visits with Baba and the picnics that they had and the dinners that they had and all the money that they collected. You know, these were not recorded. And like I said, these evil race, these evil people, they are our own race and our own black skin. Okay, because, you know, the only, the only, the only white person that they threw in there was Joe. And that's Robbie's husband. They threw Joe Hibner in there, you know. But trust me, family, they all work collectively as a whole, okay, our own race. And like I said, many of you are not going to like what I have to say. And some of you already know what I'm about to say. And what I'm about to tell you is the truth. And, you know, some of you just needed somebody like myself to just break it down and boldly put these niggas on, bla on blast, you know. And sadly enough, many of you are those very people that I'm talking about. Your job was to distract. Your job was to lie. Your job was to get a position to be on top, to extort Baba Yanun, steal his money, lie to his followers, take advantage of your own race and creed and kind. And as it is recorded in John chapter 8, verse 44, you are of your father the devil. He was a murderer, and the truth is not in him. I'm telling you, y'all, these niggas will lie and cry in a minute in your face like it's nothing, okay? Baba said years ago, this devil that we're dealing, dealing with, this, is the, this one, because there's six of them, and the one that we're dealing with is the liar, okay? And so you black devils and informants, you think that, <laughs> I'm going to tell you something, you think that the Celtics, these Celtic, wicked, evil devils that you work for, you think these white people give a damn about you? Please, it's all personal to them. And by that, I mean you're just being used. See, these niggas sit down with their devil friends, and they throw your asses under the bus, okay? And now I'm about to pick your stupid ass up and throw you back under the bus, okay? But I'm not going to just throw you under the bus. I'm, I'm about to run you over. Trust and know, Ms. Yardu, this is personal for me too, okay? Because I've had personal experiences in dealing with the very people who claim they love Baba and stood up in front of us all dressed up claiming that they love Pops, crying, swearing that they hate the devil, you know. And, you know, many of them ate with me, laughed with me. Some of them I watched their kids, you know. And because, you know, the sad thing about this whole thing is that many of you love this devil so much, 
you know, and y'all love his world and his money and his fake dreams and illusions that, you know, y'all are going to try to slander my name after this call. And all I got to say is watch your mouth because <laughs> that's why so many of y'all are dying now or you're sick and you got all this crap going on in your lives because y'all are attacking the people who really love you. Y'all are attacking the people that really care about Baba, you know, and y'all think that, oh, you know, Oh, you know, I, I, I remember a long time ago, Tashaka Malik's wife said to me, Oh, Tyba Jet, you're always in an uproar. I said, you goddamn right. How would you feel if you, somebody put your man in jail you know, and locked him up and your father and your mother and your cousin? How would you feel? Okay? You would be fighting for, your, for Tashaka Malik too. So don't tell me about being in an uproar when I, when I was in the same place with Baba. You know, I worked in his office with him. He's not a freaking child molester. They're lying. And I'm pretty sure y'all know he's lying. And since we on that subject, let me let me let me clear something up for y'all family. Let me take my glasses off for a minute. I gotta stand up for this one. Check this out, family. Okay? This is this and I'm and I'm gonna tell you something. This is sad, but y'all need to really take a look at this. Because I me, I sat back and I watched stuff for years, okay? And I'm bringing this up for a reason. Like I said, I'm going to expose a lot of people. Y'all not going to like what i got to say, but I don't give a damn. And I'm bringing up this sister, Carlita Gonzalez. Let me tell you about her. She moved in Colorado with Zanitra, Janet Goins, um, Lubna, who's also known as Rosalind Ellis, and Lubna and Zanitra, they transcended. They're not here anymore. And when she was in Colorado... She intentionally left her husband because she wanted to be in Baba's family, right? So her children were very young at the time. So she, she left her husband, you know, told her husband she's with Baba, she's going to be with Baba, you know, and Baba made it clear to Carlita that he was not really interested in her like that. And I'm going to tell you all something. Make no mistakes because I worked in Baba's office. These women is acting all like Baba's this and that. I'm telling you, when I worked in Bob's office, they used to be waiting up all night, like he was Al Green or Teddy Pendergrass, waiting for Bob in line. Some of them had husbands they didn't care. Okay, brothers? So don't let these women make you think that, you know, they're these righteous princesses, okay? Because I've seen them. And it's sad that, you know, that, that this, this situation, what she did is sad. Let me, let me, let me go, let me, let me not get distracted. So, Carlita, after she, when Baba explained to her when they moved down to Georgia, she was in the house one day and Baba called the house and she said to Baba, oh, Baba, I left Nazario, that's her mate, her husband, who she's with now. Oh, I left him, Baba. And Baba said, what are you talking about? This bird's dropping out the sky. I don't got time to be thinking about this. And Baba told her in a letter, called her his daughter, right? So now the family moves to New York, but before they moved to New York, she tells Zanitra and a few other sisters, oh, I'm grooming my daughter, I'm Unette for him. This is Baba's wife. Okay, first of all, you got a 15-year-old daughter and a 70-year-old man in prison. He has grandchildren her age, and you're saying this about the master teacher with the type of case that we got, knowing that this is a federal case and that they, they charging Baba, saying that he molested children. Y'all are making newcomers and people who don't really know Baba think that Baba would really have sex with a young girl like that? Really? You know, y'all ought to be ashamed of yourself. And there's other sisters that are doing that too or tried to do it. I mean, you want to be in a family so bad that you're going to tell people that your daughter is Baba's child. And I'm going to tell you like this, I know this for a fact, Baba is not happy about that. But see, he hasn't been able to write and communicate with the family to express, but you're not going to do that to our Lord and Savior and make him look like he's some freaking pedophile waiting to be with some 15-year-old girl, okay? And now she's 18, well, however long it was, but still. So cut that out, all right? That needed to be exposed. I needed to tell y'all that, that Bob was never, ever interested in Carlita's daughter. He never wrote a letter and told her that. And my thing is this, how was he interested in your daughter if you yourself tried to be in his family if you was interested in him. So now you're not interested in him. Now his, it's his daughter. And then you're going to turn around and lie and tell your son to marry into Baba's daughter. You're going to tell your children, oh, Baba wants y'all to marry his daughter. So you're going to get your son 
to marry into Bob's family. And I'm going to tell you like this, because if that was, if I was in prison and those were my children and you did some crap like that, oh, it would definitely be a problem. Because, see, when you're talking about mating someone with somebody else's child, you're talking about genes, you're talking about genetics, you're talking about a whole lot of stuff that goes on with children, okay? And Bob has never, ever mated a sister, put a sister with a brother that was broke. Okay, and they, I, I don't see none of your sons with cars, businesses, none of that. So I think it's I think it's sad that you're doing that. Okay, and I'm gonna put that out there. And I already told you, your daughter is disrespectful, and she, her, her Amunet and Ahmunet. Okay, they got out of line with me. I'm a grown woman. I'm 54 years old, and I'm not a child. And if you can't check your freaking daughters, and you they're gonna talk to me like I'm some nigga on the street, then they deserve to get slapped down when I see them. Okay? I'm not going to be disrespected by nobody's freaking kids in this goddamn tribe. Y'all get your freaking families together and get your lives right and who's the back. Okay? Because you're breaking all the rules and regulations and you think just because y'all got internet and you can say something that you ain't going to get stepped to. I am the right one. Okay? I don't play them games with somebody's freaking kid. Get your freaking billy goats in check. All right? Because your daughter talking about she's supposed to be a virgin. She was 18 years old and she's with a mate now. What is she doing telling me I need some D-I-C-K? 